Repentance is a huge theme in the Bible. Uh, It's not a very popular one, but it is a huge theme in the Bible. And if you want to take very seriously the things of God and your study of God and reflection on your own life, then repentance has to be a part of that process. And when you look at your Bible, you see repentance all the way back in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is that incredibly vital book which reminds us of the terms of the covenant that God had, Yahweh had with his people. And in fact, when you look in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, Moses is recounting the terms of the covenant with Yahweh to the people. And he says this, he says, If you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, in the field, in the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And all of these blessings, I mean, they travel from, you know, down from verse 3 all the way down to verse 14. And it essentially says, if you obey the will of Yahweh, all of these blessings are yours. And so who in their right mind would not obey? Um, But then you get down to verse 15 and the discussion shifts. Now, Now listen to this. It says, but if you will not obey the voice of Yahweh your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. And so verse 16, Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. And these curses stretch, now get this, all the way down from verse 16, all the way down to verse 68. So in comparison, the blessings go from 3 to 14, and the curses go from you know, 16 down to verse 68. And I think because the list of curses are so much longer, I think Moses is really revealing what he thinks the people, you know, the direction that they're going in. I don't think he keeps his prediction a secret at all because when you eventually get to chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, notice the notice carefully the wording that Moses gives there. He says, "When when all these blessings and curses come upon you, Moses knows the story is going in a particular direction. He's wandered around with these people for 40 years. He knows their nature. So when you get to Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1, it says, And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, he's essentially predicting the exile, the ultimate curse. They were going to get the boot from the promised land. And that's going to happen, you know, 700 years, essentially, after he makes this speech. And I want to say to you that the reason we're told their story is that their story is in many ways very often our story. We have this promise of blessings in our lives, but we also understand that there are consequences when we commit injustices and consequences when we uh, commit acts that hurt other people and consequences really to hurting the heart of our Creator. And so I want us to look at both a challenge and a promise that's associated with our relationship with God. They're found you know, beginning in verse 2 and 3 of Deuteronomy 30. Uh, Moses essentially says, verse 1, you know, when all these things come upon you, the blessings of the curses, and you remember them. Verse 2, here it is, and you return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul. Well, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you, and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Here in Deuteronomy 30, verse 2, Moses uses a very important word. It's the word shuv. This is a Hebrew word. It's found 1,075 times 
in the Hebrew Bible. And it means to turn. It means to return. It means to go or to come back. And it's really the word that's used in, in the Old Testament for the, the idea of repentance. And I want you to see that it is a word. Shuv is a word of travel and direction. And so the idea is somebody is pointing out that you are moving in the wrong direction in life, and so you turn. It's a word that has to do with movement. So at the outset, as we think about this idea of repentance, this, this huge theme in the Bible, I want you to see the very first thing that we encounter, the idea in the Bible, is that to repent means to turn. You're going in the wrong direction, and you turn to the right way. Uh, Jesus himself will say in his ministry that unless you turn to God, you'll never be ready for whatever else happens in your life. So we see this, this idea all throughout the Old Testament. Isaiah 44, verse 22, when God calls for his, his sinning nation to repent, he phrases it very interestingly. He says, return to me. Shuv, return. It's a movement. Um, Jeremiah 34, verse 16, when God is accusing Israel of apostasy, he says, you have turned, Shuv, you have turned and profaned my name. Jeremiah 11, verse 10, they have turned to the sins of their forefathers. And so I want you to notice, repentance is not just about turning away from sin. That's how people use it that way all the time. It's really about both because you can't do one without the other. They're turning from rebellious ways, but also turning toward the good things of God. And so it's actually used this exact way in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 2, where it says, return to the Lord your God. Notice that direction. And so it says, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you. Uh, and he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And so to repent, what is the essential idea in Scripture? All you ever hear about is about turning from sin. And it is a word that means to turn. It's, it's a directional word. But repentance is not just turning from something like sin. It is also and especially turning toward something or someone, namely God. And so I want you to, to in your mind, grasp this concept. You really can't do one of these things without the other. You really, in your heart of hearts, cannot turn from sin without also turning toward God. And so in 2 Kings 17, 13, it says, Turn from your evil ways. Shuv, here used in the sense of turning from sin. That's the way we very often know about the use of the word. But here's another use of the word. He, uh, Hosea 14, verse 1, return to the Lord your God, shuv, toward the Lord your God. So here it's, it's used in, a po in the positive sense. So we have this concept, these concepts should be very living in our minds, that, that repentance at its heart is to turn to God. And you can't really do that without also turning from sin. But the real heart of it is God, is, is our focus and direction, fixing our eyes on him. Now, all of us have experienced a problem in our lives. We've all experienced it. We don't just turn once to God and a once away from sin, ever. We find ourselves turning and returning over and over again throughout our lives. And it's very, very disheartening sometimes and difficult. And so when you look at Deuteronomy 30 and verse 2, it says, When you return to the Lord your God, you and your children... And obey the, the voice and all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul. Just notice from, from this very early example, here you have a case of the people of God who are turned toward God in following his will. But, but they're very clearly going to rebel. And then they're going to have to return. So even they experienced, you see it in Scripture, this process over and over again where we have to constantly refocus our lives, our minds, and our hearts toward the things of God. And so this is, this is encouraging in one sense to see in Scripture that this is the way people had to behave and to live out their lives as well. 
Uh, and when you look at the message of Deuteronomy 30 and verse 2, where you return uh, with all your heart and with all your soul, it's a good thing. The problem is when you look at Israel's track record, it's really, really, really bad. They end up turning and returning over and over and over and over again. And I want to just ask you to compare yourself to that. How's your track record look? Because very often we find ourselves turning and returning and re-returning over and over and over again. And I want to highlight from Deuteronomy 30 and verse 2 that really the, the main problem is a heart problem. Just like ancient Israel, we find ourselves over and over again challenged with the question, what is it in your life that you love the most? Uh, and, and I want you just to see the heart of repentance and, and the, play, the role that it plays. So to repent, it means to turn, shuv, to turn. It's directional. You're turning toward God. You're also turning away from sin. But I want you to notice thirdly that as we continue the process of turning and returning to God, that God promises in that process, if you keep him first, it'll change your heart. And that's really where the main issue gets addressed. So as you look back at Deuteronomy 30 and you notice verse 6, it addresses the problem. It says, The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And so God's promise to those who continually turn back to him is that little by little over time, your heart is being transformed for the better. This process is called in theology sanctification, and it is a process. Little by little, throughout your life, you are becoming more and more like the example and person of Jesus. That doesn't happen immediately, one time, ever. It's a process that happens throughout life. And so the core of our problem is that we don't actually love God more than we love ourselves. And so there has to be a shift in our desires where as time goes on, our desires are changed more and more and more. And so repentance really is about the true passion and desire of our hearts to love God more and to obey him more than we love our sin. And so the promise of this text is that God can change you, that he will heal you. And as you respond to him in this lifelong process of turning and returning to him, he's there with you and he's shaping your heart and he's whittling away at those aspects of your heart which are against him. Take confidence in this, and may God help all of us to return to God. In Jesus' name, His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here, everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here, we enter. Yeah.